In this video, it is going to be something very different than what I planned on talking about on this channel, but this is just about the realness of entrepreneurship. I really do not feel like making this content today. Had Carlos here for about 45 minutes now, just been dragging my feet, but got to do the hard things, right? And so I'm not going to teach anything today. Today's lesson is just about the difficulty and the hard part about entrepreneurship. It's about the part that no one talks about or you feel like quitting or nothing's going right. We just feel like rolling over in your bed, staying up late, binge watching Netflix and doing whatever, stress eating. This is about that. Every time we launched a course or launched something new, we always had these crazy health crises. So like I actually launched, let's say the last four courses or updates I've done, two of them I've actually been, like I actually filmed in the hospital, wild. I've never shared that publicly, right? And so I remember I was knocking out like a week's worth of content in the hospital to hit deadlines and I launched it and I remember someone was complaining about my audio and I was like, if you only knew, if you only knew why the audio sounds like that, right? But I never shared it. I was just like, yeah, thanks for the feedback. This past month, random crazy family health scare happened again. We're actually in the hospital 21 of 27 days last month. It was wild. I'm just there, a whole bunch of family in town. Everyone's kind of supporting. And um, I had to take three weeks off unexpectedly. The business didn't do great. It didn't suck. It didn't do great. We had a lot of great plans. It didn't go as planned at all. But it was interesting. A couple of good things happened in there. One, it made you realize what you thought was important that never really was to begin with. And what's always been important that you've been neglecting. It was a good priority shift and it gave us the perspective of what actually is important and what we're doing. And then in that moment, I have a friend, G. Bryant. He's a big fitness and kind of health influencer. And he went through a big come to Jesus moment where he just felt God told him to like sell all his possessions, just kind of get off the grid and just realign with what was really important. And I felt like that was what was happening with me. You know, I'm a person of faith, or you may not know, but I am. And my mom gave me this really cool analogy during this time, and it was like the difference between being a store manager and a store owner, right? Picture a franchise. She was saying I was operating so much like a store owner, like I gotta come up with all the strategy, figure everything out, run everything, manage the people, et cetera. But she was like, what would life look like if I allowed myself to be a store manager and had like, you know, more faith in God to provide direction and steps. And so what that would look like is managing the team, managing the budgets, managing the people, execute and I have leadership ability. But I realize I'm not doing it all by myself, that there is a higher being that's controlling the shots, ship creating the strategy, worrying about all the really difficult stuff. And I'm just showing up and executing on what I'm being told. And I never really thought about it like that, right? Moms was dropping some good gems. And I realized that how I always wanted to be in control of stuff, which serves its purpose well as an entrepreneur, problem solving, all these things are good, being self-determined and a self-starter. But at times, like in this moment, bro, I felt so burnt out, so overwhelmed, like I had no answers for stuff. And I never really felt that way in a while. The interesting thing is it made me kind of look at what I'm doing, who I'm doing it for, what's the importance of it. So much of the business, um, this coaching business depended on me to show up for clients, et cetera. In these three weeks, a couple of things happened. One, I want to talk to you about just the truth of entrepreneurship. This thing is hard. A lot of people hit me up every week like, hey, man, I, I see the awards. I, I see the money. I see the whatever. Even in the hospital when I was there, people were like, hey, what do you do? How are you, how are you able to be here so often? Like, like, what do you do for a living? It just made me think like there's certainly benefits like the flexibility and stuff, but it really can be tiresome and lonely and stressful realizing that everything depends on you. There's nobody else to take care of things and make sure the, the bills are paid, make sure your employees are paid, all this other stuff happening. So you don't really have time to take off. Now I'm not complaining that's a blessing for the next reason I'm about to get into is because I know I'm not doing it only for myself. I have a bigger purpose so I'm doing a, a bigger mission. And so I, I accept the challenge. Sometimes going through it where you're the last person, you're, you're the owner in this example, there's nobody to talk to, no one to go to for help. Stuff could feel hard, especially when you actually don't feel like it. The bad thing about um, creating content is you gotta be on. I forgot who it was. It was either Madi or uh, another person who makes a lot of content online, but I remember them talking transparently about how they just felt burnt out. Like they felt like they always had to be on. It was either Madi or Abu. I can't remember who I was having that combo with. 
they were just like, yo, it's just tiring always being on, always being perfect, coming out with new fire, always being inspiring and stuff. But really, we're doing with our own stuff too. And I think Mighty said he, or I know he publicly talked about how he started taking up photography and some other people are dealing with other stuff. I realized I didn't really have a hobby. And so like I needed a way to just take my mind off of work because like unlike other skills, our brain is always like, this is the thing that makes us the money, right? But it's always working. And so like if I was fixing stuff with my hand, like maybe a mechanic or a sculptor or something, when I was away from it, I could stop doing what I'm doing. Or if like I was coding, I could stop doing what I'm doing. The bad thing about what we do is it's all in our mind. I don't really know how to turn it off. And so forcing yourself to do something that is not an analytic or anything like that, like something on the other side is really cool. So I got a gym membership, start putting up shots. I used to play basketball coming up. I used to play it a lot. Haven't really played for a while. So started putting up shots, which was cool. And it just made me realize I need a hobby outside of work. I can't always be thinking about making money and impact all the time. I need time to decompress. Uh, a couple of my friends, they have therapists, which is amazing. I have spoken to some therapists in the past. I think I'm going to revisit that. Just a way to speak to a professional who understands how to communicate and just get my thoughts out. The other thing is, man, um, entrepreneurship can have you in a real bad comparison game. You realize that you start doing things and you don't know why you're doing them. And in this moment, I've been looking, I'm like, man, there's, there's certain things I'm probably doing to compete with other people or to please other people that has nothing to do with me. There's this book, a really good book that Abu actually, Abu Fafana had me read called Mimetic Desires. And it's really dope and it talks about this concept and it's about how so much of what we're doing subconsciously is really to please or to compete with other people, whether or not we're actually admitting to it. And so they gave a couple of examples of how everyone's buying an electric vehicle, right? All your friends. So you start getting a Tesla, you start doing stuff like that. You may be like, you know what? I see that. I'm not going to do that. Let me get this other car. Let me get this muscle car to be different. Well, in reality, you're still being impacted by the fact that everyone's getting um, an electric vehicle. You're just dealing with it, that response and that stimulus a little bit differently. And so much of that is true with entrepreneurship. We're so connected online to people who we may not know very well. We don't know the full story of what's happening in their back in their business. We come on and we don't make these videos about, yeah, life sucks right now. Business sucks right now. I'm stressed out feel like crying, all that stuff. We come on talking about here. Here's the perfect way to do this. Here's how we made a hundred grand last month. And what may be true, but you don't know what people had to go through to get there or how much of that's profit or what they sacrificed and lost to get there. I remember speaking with someone a while back, this guy I looked up to, and um, he was very successful. I think he made like half a million dollars a year, was in all the clubs, won in all these awards. I was talking to him about life and I just asked him a, a real basic question, like, what advice do you have for me that I wouldn't know to ask you, right? Like, what questions should I be asking you that I'm not? And he said, man, my life sucks right now. I would love to be back where you are. Two divorces in, haven't spoken to my kids in forever. I'm always busy. Times I find myself just crying when they're like, where did I go off the wrong path? And it was so wild to me because I, I didn't admit it. And he was like, you know, everything is hard. And he's making the best of the cards he was dealt. But the reality is kind of the thing I just realized is like, yo, the things that are actually important, you don't realize it until you no longer have them. And you start chasing these things to fill a void. But reality, some of the other things are more important to him, like family, like friends. Like I, this guy like hasn't spoken to his brother in forever. They had some falling out over business. His cousins don't talk to him. And so he just feels lost and rich. And so while a lot of us may look at that and be like, yeah, well, let me get the half a million dollars a year. The reality is you don't realize that these other things that you have are really the important parts of life until you get it. And when you start doing the comparison game, you start valuing what other people tell you are valuable more so what you are. And so it was just a wake up call to like reset. I know when we sold the business, my family and I sold, scaled and sold the business and we took like six months off. And I read that book during that time. And I realized how so much of what I was doing was to win social approval or to compete with friends. And I had a, a clear slate moving into this new business, but somehow that some of these comparisons just kind of crept up to like what I should be doing, how much I should be making, the kind of life I should live. So it was a reset mode to just live life on my own terms. The second part is really faith and direction. In this 
past month, what I realized, which is always one of the most important things, is just getting direction from God. And so like, there is a much bigger game being played and we're just operating in our little, in our little bubble. And you don't realize how having a bigger purpose and a bigger vision is one, going to help you do the hard things when you don't feel like doing it. And two, impact other people. I had a friend that actually died for a few minutes and was brought back to life. And he had like a, a divine intervention, kind of supernatural moment. And we were asking him about it. And I realized in that moment that sometimes what you go through in life and the lessons are for you, but more times than not, the lessons that you go through are for other people. I met this guy in the hospital and he just changed our whole demeanor, right? He just brightened up our day. So many people who had an interaction with us, like we would be playing our music, we'd be praying, we'd be staying uh, faithful, the family would when we weren't really supposed to. And so many people would be like, hey, do you go to church? Or like, hey, what's this song? Like, what's the song you guys keep singing? What's the song you keep playing? And it's just to know like, man, this whole thing could be happening just so other people could see like how we're handling the situation, how we're still positive, how we're still helpful, how we eventually got that breakthrough, right? And things are on the up and up now for the family. But even when things were looking bad, how we're still coming through optimistic, coming through happy, coming through smiling, asking other people how their day was, asking other people to make sure they, they have a great day, all that kind of stuff. And so like how you show up for people in small interactions is a big way of um, your purpose. But in that moment, I realized that you know, my whole purpose is to, I'm in the philanthropy business, right? Our family's in the philanthropy business. What do I mean by that? It is creating money and helping other good people have access to capital and learn how to grow business, provide for their family, provide for their community so that we could be a blessing to someone else. It's not it's not in the business that's making money to just like buy fancy things, Rolexes and fast cars, although there's nothing wrong with that. It's really in the business of putting other people on so we could hire, we could bring team members in, right? We could, we could give, we could donate to charity, we could give to a church, we could give to a cause. Having a purpose that's bigger than you is a big part of what's keeping me to go through some of these tough moments. I mentioned earlier that I was making courses in the hospital, recording the modules. I didn't have to do that. I could have easily said, yo, F this course, like I'm, I want to be here for the family member, but I realized other people were dependent on it. And that one course has gone on to make so many millionaires, actually. Um, I was having lunch with one of my friends who I helped, uh, helped learn how to run ads when he was a, a beginner. And he went from like $8,000. He just told me last year he did $1.4 million. He's been doing $100,000 a month for the past like three years. And he's had like a $200,000 a month, all because I was obedient to make that course module when I was going through adversity. And so there's countless other people. Last year, we helped someone make an initial $900,000. We helped a bunch of people make about $33 million last year on Shopify, all because I'm obedient. I wanna challenge you guys to just think like, yo, am I only doing this for money? Because if so, that's gonna be very short-lived. You're gonna keep jumping from idea to idea, and it's not gonna be that motivating once you start realizing that money is not the most important thing in your life. So figure out like who is it your story is for. Like I'm making this video not for me because like someone may need this, right? Someone may be going through the same thing and may think that I got everything all figured out and that I show up feeling like working every day. Well, I don't. And so thinking about uh, what God has put in your heart to go out and do for the world and for other people and who you think that um, you were sent here and like your purpose in life, what you're here for and to do understanding that is really important. And the last thing is really just serving people. It's a subtle mindset shift from, yo, I'm gonna make this e-com course, or I'm gonna help people start business, to I just wanna be here to serve these people. I wanna be here to serve family-oriented people who wanna go out and provide for their families and wanna leave the world better than they found it, who want, you know, we work with a lot of immigrants, people who come from third world countries, who like my parents and my grandparents came to this country with not a lot. We work with single mothers. We work with people who are juggling multiple jobs to provide and send their kids to good schools. Like the people we're working with matter and the things that we're helping them do is gonna not only make their kids and their families better, but all their customers too. And so thinking about, you know, this is hard, but I am blessed that I get to serve other people and I get to show up and help and add value. 
helps me get through these difficult times where I don't feel like doing anything because it's not really about me anymore. It's like, this is an honor that I have an audience of a couple hundred people, a thousand people, 20,000 people who have taken the time to subscribe to my channel, follow me on social, join my newsletter so that I have the opportunity to like add value to their lives. It's really a blessing and it's the best job in the world being able to impact people. Uh, but at times it's hard and that's what this video is about. So what I'm doing through this moment is just giving myself a grace and I'm hella transparent with my team. I was like, hey, this is what's going on. I don't feel like doing anything. I told Carlos that as soon as he pulled up, like, hey, I'm recording this video. I don't feel like it. I'm going to go off script. And he was very supportive about that. So I think it's perfectly fine to take a break and just sit with your thoughts and take some time to make decisions where you're not on an emotional low or an emotional high, but try to find some middle ground to make decisions. And man, a big thing for me has always been pray. So like pray and just ask God for clarity, you know, the vision to see what, what, what the next move needs to be. Clarity in my ear is to like hear what the, what the word and the direction is. What I decided to do is just take some time to chill, taking a couple more weeks off to just get through this and think. And I empowered my team to just, you know, hear the things like, how do you think, uh, this, um, creates an opportunity for us and what do you think? And it's just been empowering them to do more while I take the time off. So that's what I'm doing. Probably going to chill for the next two weeks, just getting my mind right. But I just wanted to drop this video because I feel like a part of the big, uh, comparing game is everyone has it figured out online. And the more I talk to people behind the scenes, nobody has it figured out, including myself. And so that's what this video is about. Just like, I don't want to be here. Don't want to be doing this. But if you're feeling like this, I just want to give yourself some grace and uh, talk through a couple of things that I am doing to help get myself through this time. So there'll be more videos about what this means from this, where I think God is telling me uh, who, I, who I need to serve. I think I've been, uh, he's been telling me about serving other people and doing other things. And so I'll make another video just about like what happens after this break and what I'm going to do moving forward. So if this was helpful, uh, let me know in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe, share this with another entrepreneur who may be going through a tough time, but just know that God doesn't put more on you than you can bear. It may seem very difficult and you may not know why, but you've gotten through every other challenge that life has thrown at you. So you'll definitely get through this one too. So stay motivated, stay protected and stay blessed and catch me on the next video. Peace.